from a very early age, I had this very, this interest in nature, in uh, asking questions, how and why. I wanted to discover and to know everything. As a small boy, I grew up in a farmer's family. I was in the fields a lot with my father, and we discussed a lot how from a tiny seed a beautiful crop could grow, or how the water was flowing down, or how the clouds in the sky are formed. And all this beauty of Mother Nature, we were debating and discussing. So my father was a very encouraging and stimulating figure for me. And when I studied chemistry here at the University of Groningen, I had an American professor, Professor Hans Winberg, who was a really inspiring mentor and made me really go for challenging projects. And I still remember when I made my first new molecule, I got very excited. And he encouraged me a lot, saying, Ben, this molecule has never been made by anybody in the world. Let me first emphasize that I'm a synthetic chemist. So we make new molecules and materials. What we discovered is the world's first molecular rotary motor. So this is a tiny motor, one nanometer, one billion of a meter in size, and that can rotate like a propeller. And once you have a motor, you can imagine that we wanted to tackle yeah, the problem, how to move things forward. And there we designed a four-wheel nano car. So a kind of a molecular car with four wheels, which were rotary motors. And the whole idea was to demonstrate that when you have a single nano car, yeah, that you can go from rotary motion to translational motion, to move things in forward. It's a bit of a science fiction, of course. What are the potential of all these things? But you can imagine that you can, you can make materials that repair themselves. Think of a scratch in your car. Yeah? And there are these tiny motors in there that open up small pores, material flows out, and the scratch repairs itself. And ultimately, maybe in 50 years from now, tiny robots that you get injected in your blood veins go for a defect at the cell, maybe a tumor, and repair it. Receiving the Nobel Prize, of course, came as a big surprise, the highest award that a scientist uh, can get. It's like a dream. But it also changes the life in the sense that, uh, for instance, this morning I bike to the lab, and a lady next, biking next to me said, ah, congratulations, you are the Nobel laureate. We are so proud of you. I was in the privileged situation that I got ESC grants to support our research. And I, I cannot emphasize enough how important the ESC scheme has been in the past 10 years to support science in Europe. You need to get that kind of funding for challenging projects, which not immediately can, can, you can tell what will be the application next year, but will open up entirely new opportunities, both for society and industry, in the years to come. Of course, I spend a lot of time on research with my, my team and so, but you should not forget that I'm also teaching. And I think we cannot encourage young people enough to go into education, to go into research, to go into building our future.